Couch Entertainment. That's right, boys. Yeah, hello, right. everybody! Hello, hello! Welcome back Thank to you. Drunks and Dragons, the full costume comedy D&D show right here on the Grouch Couch! Because it's Sunday, and it's 5 p.m. PST. I need to fix that. I'm gonna fix that. Um, I am Dungeon Master <laughs> Turkey! That's right! Because uh, fuck DM Turk, the side questers DM. That guy's an a-hole. And uh, he got to bring us back from break. But you know what? This is the first important stream from break. That's fucking right. And I'm here with Connor and... Fishy, our lovely, amazing two oh, no. heroes and characters and players for tonight's show! Hooray! For tonight's show! Cheers, everybody! Fill up your motherfucking flagons, because it's time, once again, for Drunks and Dragons. Man, I haven't said that in a long time. That's weird. Oh, yeah. You Here can't we go. dismiss this, Kamashita. <laughs> Our costumes are the best, we are the wicked, we never get a rest. The dice for the show and the story is average, but with the help of chat, there will be carnage. You never know what is gonna happen. A dragon, a kraken, assassin, imagine, but it doesn't matter, just roll for it. Holy shit, that is 20 critical hit! This is Drunks and Dragons, so fill up all your flagons. Hey! This is Drunks and Dragons, so prepare for some shenanigans. You fucking bet your ass it is. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Hi. 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 Yes. Good shit. Oh, yeah. All right. Is it time? It is time to set the scene for you, too. It is time to set the scene. I hope everybody is ready for scene setting time. Oh, yeah. Set that scene. Yeah, Here we yeah. go. <clears throat> it's hard to read over there. Like, I feel like there should be a better way to do this. Like, if I could just... Yeah, but then y'all can see my notes. It's impossible. All right, I'm reading it over there. We're fine. We return now to our heroes on the campus of Strongheart University, the magical adventurer college in our here realm of Intoxica. Y'all know where it is. Right here, right in the smack dab center of the heart of Intoxica, the central most place, the beginning, the origin, the lovely time. We are currently at a halfway point of this here campaign. Yes, we are. Over the course of our characters' academic years here at the college, they have encountered multiple different anomalies, including strange oils that were turning objects into evil creatures, and magical items that had been tampered with to cause chaos, and remnants of chitlin armor that had been left behind by some mysterious group of characters. While Saving the college from these anomalies, our heroes have been attending classes, making friends, and growing as adventurers. Ronk, you have been secretly learning how to bake and cook the finest of goods. You are embarrassed by this fact, but your progress has come mighty. Felix, you have been growing your rivalries with your fellow students to try and become the alpha of your very own extracurricular right here at the college. Last time, our heroes fought and saved fellow students from a magical chimera that magically grew out of a bunch of grubs that had been infested with pieces of chitlin armor. Our heroes previously found similar pieces at a grave in Wilt Root Hall. Also, our heroes signed up for the upcoming Mage Tower game under the name The Breakfast Club. So in between classes and extracurriculars, our heroes have been assembling their team before practice starts. And... Practice will resume very soon. And you guys have a few options. Sorry for the long intro. It's just been two weeks. So I feel like this is really helpful, right? This is like really helpful, right? To remember what the fuck's going on. I hope nobody yeah, tuned too. out. I'm sorry. Yeah, I fuck. Yeah. We now return to you two. You have recently talked to one of your professors that you think you can trust about removing 
Eddie the Donkey's curse so he can join your team. But before I continue, <clears throat> please let me know, which professor did you talk to? Was it Professor Woodslobber, your homeroom teacher? Was it Professor Hooters from last semester? Professor Robbie, the archery teacher? Or was it one of your counselors that you had been assigned this here year at Strongheart University? Take your time to think about this. So, uh, who do we trust around here? I don't do know. Do uh, I remember us having kind of a problem with Professor Hooters. Professor Woodslobber's kind of a dick. Yeah, but sometimes dicks you can trust, right? Yeah. Like, they don't give us any, like, he seems genuine about just teaching, so... Well, do you trust Jace? Well, fuck no. Well, there fuck you Jace. go. Can't trust all the dicks, can you? Oh, yeah, I guess. What about that, uh... There was that really weird guy that had the blonde hair and, uh... Taught us how to shoot bows. Uh, Professor Armwood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking the, uh, bow Armwood. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh... I think, uh... I think we could trust him. Just Are a little you bit. sure? Oh yeah, I hear he's great with student-teacher relationships. No, no, I don't believe that because I heard there was some controversies and a lot of rumors going around that he gets a little too close with the students. That's weird. I heard the opposite, but only from Stan. Robbie. Give us a speech. <laughs> I was muted, but I was laughing. <laughs> it's time for a crotch speech rock. The first crotch speech of the night. Thank you so much, Abstracto. You fucking rock. I miss crotch speeches. And here we are. Well, uh, you see, uh, mustaches sometimes change because of uh, their biology is getting them ready for the mating season. So they have to uh, change their appearance to attract uh, female mustaches to maybe mate with them to uh, hopefully produce offspring that will last through the winter. So uh, there you go. He is like a survival guide at times, I swear. I knew this was going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. so it's almost All like right. I know uh, or two about nature. Real quickly. Um... Ronk, let's see if this is canon. Roll me a history check. Just because we talked about how much we love history checks on Couch Coffee. Roll me a history check. There's a 10 plus 3. There may or may not be sentient mustaches in the realm of Intoxica. Wait, I thought that was already a thing. Is it? Oh, no. We got, we got a lot of shit going on here, man. Sometimes it's hard to, you know... Mustache offspring. There you go. Look at all these mustache emotes. <laughs> oh, those are Markiplier mustaches. Of course they are. Why wouldn't I know that? All right. Have you guys made your decision? Or would you like more time to discuss? I think we need more time. Okay. Yeah, you can't trust Arwen. He gets too close to his students. Now, when you say too close, what do you mean by that? I feel like he tries to just completely just fill them with uh, with all of his knowledge. Do you think the students could take all that knowledge? Well, I mean, his student did stick around for a really long time. I would almost say she was probably knowledge whipped. You're saying she was so full of knowledge it was overflowing. I bet she was probably busting at every seam of just knowledge everywhere. Dripping. <laughs> okay, I can't do that no more. Well, Sora made it in. Hi, Sora. I guess we gotta. I guess Come we gotta go ahead and trust uh, Doctor Woodslobber then. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. When it comes down to it, you could probably always trust a wood sobbler. Yeah. 
Saves All right. Him. You guys have made yeah. your decision. Yes, you have. Well, Dr. Woodslobber told you to meet Dr. Woodslobber and Eddie later this very evening in front of the Biblioplex. And Dr. Woodslobber may be able to help you. So you two have some time to hang around campus until then. So you both decided to join your fellow students and friends. You were told that Tulk, the Sip and Sud security guard, drained the retention pool behind the tavern for a cleaning tomorrow. So for a few hours, you heard that your friends are hanging out in a perfectly smooth, empty pool. And you know what that means. Frickin' Magic Skate Park, baby, dude, what's up? Fuck yeah. Um, one question. Would you yeah. say this is morning? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, uh, previously, I had received a dwarven, uh, a belt of dwarven kind. Yes, and that did. belt, uh, I attune to it and raises my constitution and stuff. Yeah. But, there's a 50% chance at dawn that I could grow a full beard. Now, um, as long as I can grow a full beard. Now, I feel like I feel like Tabaxi's already kind of have a beard going on. Can Tabaxi's grow beards? I spelled beards wrong. Can Tabaxi's Is it grow just beards? The lion's brain? Help us out, Reddit. We're going to check it out right Trashcan now. Absolute Trashcan says, "Let's ah. get beards." Let's get beards. Ah, let's get beards. Cheers, Trashcan. Love you, buddy. Thank you for joining us. Cheers. Mm. Uh, DM rolls a one hundred. No beard, but you now have a poofy tail. If a lion can grow a mane, I don't see why a tabaxi couldn't have a beard growing into a mane. Um, I mean, have you ever seen a lynx? Um, I'd say that a magic item that grows a beard would grow a beard on a tabaxi. I'm sure that would be possible. The fur around his chin would just be shaggier. If it's magical, it should be able to give dragons beards, so I don't see why not. Okay. Um, okay. Truth now, how do we determine a 50% chance of growing now, a beard? I'm going to let you choose. You can roll 2d10 as if it is a 1d100, and if you get under a 50, then it, you won't. If you get over, then you will. Or you could just roll a d20 and do odds and evens. So odd, you don't grow a beard, even you do. It's up to you what you want to roll. Well, I'm pretty sure we play a d20 system around here, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, uh, even that we grow the beard, odds we don't grow the beard. Cool. I mean, Ronk is right. The Galatius card of Felix oh, not it's yet. An Thank you for the reminder. It's an even. I have to that, grow a beard. That means to grow a beard. Someone else to help with the chaos. It's trash can. Yup. Um Well, before you put on the beard, there may be additional effects. Why don't you go ahead and roll me one D one hundred? We'll see what your card is. Give a dice. Oh, you got a reroll from Abstracto, which is totally fucking legal. Oh, it's still a fucking even. I still right. grow a beard. Alright. And then a 1D100. Oh, it's a 94. That's pretty high. high. That's pretty high. Dude. I saw, dude. I saw, You're dude. fucking high. You're fucking high, bro. Usually yeah. I do feel pretty lucky when I get fucked abstracto, so. Haha. All right. Make sure to check out the magic sheet if you want. You can use exclamation point card list to check out our wild magic and our cards. 94. Truth. You cannot lie for one whole day. God damn it. Well, shit. Now, Thanks, grow your beard. Gala. Grow your beard. I will grow my beard. I'm not sure how this is supposed to work with the, uh, with everything going on. But, uh, We'll figure it out. Curse me all night, Felix. There you go. Ronk's draw card was on cooldown. True. Yes, yes, yes. You have magically been turned into puppets. It's oh, puppet it's time. Puppet. All right, you chaos bastards. First, let's oh, check out this Tom lovely Tom. beard. Yeah, it's from Tom. I'm trying to, but <laughs> everything's super awkward and... Tabaxi just don't really have ears like they're supposed to. Or like humans, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Uh, timer. Here we go. Is it working out? I can't. Is it? Oh, God. It's like in my mouth. 
It's, it's a in mask. It doesn't. You don't, you don't need the mustache. It's just a beard. How does it look? Looks great. <laughs> 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 Looks fucking great. All right. Um. Now I guess we're gonna turn into puppets for a minute. So good thing I get to do all the talking now because I gotta finish explaining what the fuck is going on. Okay. Uh, let me sit over here, and I gotta read really far away. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, can I move this? I can't. Thank God. <laughs> this is not gonna work how it worked last time. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, bud. I, I believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, get some Velcro yeah. things to hold it on. There you go. Yeah, it looks hot. Yeah, it does. It. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, time started. So, the teacher told you to meet them and Eddie later in the evening in front of the Biblioplex, and they might be able to help you. So, you two have some time to hang around campus. Um, I already did this bit, but... You were told that Tulk at the Sip and Sud security guard, he drained the retention pool behind the tavern for cleaning. So for a few hours, your friends are hanging out in a perfectly smooth, empty pool. And you know what that means? Shred it, dude. Shred it, my dude. Baby dude, yeah! Um, you got a flower nearby? Because um, Rum Tub did Druidcraft with the flower. We could just say your beard has flowers in it. But if you have a prop, um, that'd be sick. Like, I think I do, but it's like outside the fake flowers. Okay. I wasn't we'll get prepared it. for flowers. We'll get it after puppet time or before next break or whatever. Now, okay. as you two approach the scene, you see behind the tavern, several groups of students cluster around you in an empty cluster around an empty pool, laughing and waving improvised skates made from wooden planks with wheels affixed to the bottom. The empty pool is made of smooth stone and set about 30 feet into the ground. You can also see that the tavern's back door seems to be propped open. As you draw closer to the pool, you see all of your friends there, watching someone in the pool, skating around with perfect precision, waving around a wand as they skate. You two approach the situation, and you can see all of your friends. Which I'm gonna help you all remember who the fuck we're actually looking at real quick. Uh, I did this thing, so hopefully this is help. Up, 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 up. Um, Claire Nightflower is there. Ah, oh, the dang, the dang, the dang avatars are in the way. Ah, oh, my the dang. Beard. Oh, fix, fix your damn beard. Technical difficulties, everybody. Someone peed in it. Someone peed in what? The pool? No! Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's up Claire there. Nightflower is there. <clears throat> so is Erland Grey Baron. And Jace, you see him standing off in the corner. As well as Slurp. And, uh, you can't do corn when I'm a puppet. It just don't work. <laughs> we just... <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work. It doesn't pick me up. It doesn't see me. Uh, yeah, Slurp is there. And so is Chester. Um, also, Carmen and Whitney Houston. They're all there. All your friends as you approach the scene. Oh, you them. two walk around the pool looking at the person skating on the inside. Is there anything you wish to do right now? Love to go skating, but I don't have. Four. Yeah, well, they're using like improvised skates. They're like wooden skates with wheels on the bottom. Hmm. What is in my inventory that I can possibly make something with? Yeah. Yeah. Well, have no fear. You know what? <clears throat> Don't even worry about that. Don't even worry your 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 little your little tits about that. We got we got ten seconds. Everybody do something wild as a puppet to make it worth it. Ah! Ah! I'm, a I'm a puppet. I'm a puppet with a beard. I'm a puppet with a beard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Sorry the corn didn't work, uh, Weenus. I'm sorry it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> what is his face, Connor? <laughs> All right. Here's what happens once he gets back. We're waiting. We're waiting. I'm happy to be back here. Playing some D&D. &D, getting some drinks in, dude. This is freaking fun, dude. I'm happy to be here. I love playing D&D &D so much. I love telling stories. Uh, my brain just went a little wild. And I will kind of say that for the rest of this book here that we're doing, I may go a little bit off script. So for reason, those of you guys who know Strixhaven, the book, you've played it before, things may be a little bit different. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. He's trying to fix his beard, everybody. But I need you for this bit, Felix. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm here. Yeah. So hi, Suni. See you in chat there. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, there also is Suni. Odie and Weenus avatars now that Abstracto just finished on Saturday. They're fucking amazing. I don't have the equipment um, set up for them yet, but you could just use them as avatars for right now. Um, by the end of next week, I'll have all the equipment and shit set up. It's going to be great. Uh, cool, you made it yours, Turkey. Yeah, fuck it. I mean, I kind of already have. Eddie the Donkey doesn't exist in the Strixhaven book, but he's become a very main character of this here campaign. Jesus, Felix, what is going on, bro? You have any idea how hard it is to put on a beard and flowers and a mask? <laughs> All right, there's a lot going on right here. And you know what? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready for any of it. <laughs> okay, here's what happens. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? The person... Skating around in Absolute the Trash Can says really channeling that stereotypical when a tiger with an Amish neck beard escapes from the zoo and goes to get braided up nice at the rent fair vibe. So basic. <laughs> so basic. Cheers, Trash Can. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. The person skating around in the pool, almost with finesse, with precision, amazingly. <laughs> Spinning around and waving a wand at their feet as they do crazy tricks. Eventually, this person skates around and flies up out of the pool above you. You both look up in awe as the person lands down right in front of you, Felix. And as soon as you see who it is, your stomach completely drops. It is a black and white tabaxi with a scar over his left eye. He looks at you and says... Hello, brother. Then boom, your mind goes into a flashback from whenever you were a child with your brother in the alleyway. I gotta set this up now. Yes. Yes. Sands. You go into a flashback with you and your brother in the alleyway when you were children. Just born. Technically, you don't have the beard at this moment because you're a child and it doesn't. Um, but yeah. You were sucked back to that alleyway when you were both kids. My whole computer just froze. It's raining. And it's cold. It's, it's, it's raining. And oh, yeah. And you were all alone. Come on. It's frozen. Come on. Come on! Alright, I'm gonna refresh it. You sit in a wooden box together with your brother as your tummies growl. It's refreshing. I don't know why I just decided to crash on you. Yeah. You both crawl out of the box looking for food as your stomachs growl. You know that the local fishermen have recently just dumped. Oh, it loads. Oh, uh, oh, it's loading. Thank God. I was just going to improv it.
every time. Every time I try to do something cool. It's like too many effects, Turkey. Stop it. I need to upgrade, yeah. Alright. It's still frozen. I ain't got it. I've got nothing. Oh, maybe this will help. Oh yeah, that helped. Okay. Jump, so pretty. Kitten Felix. Aww. Yeah, I'm gonna reread it. Reset up the scene. Cheers, everybody! Welcome to the shit show! Turkey needs a new computer! We'll get there, though. Cheers! Cheers. It's still loading. <clears throat> It's scrolling down very, very, very slow. My notes, eh? Sweet. Okay, stop. Okay, stop. Okay, st dang it! It scrolled all the way to the bottom. All right, here we go, finally. You are sucked back to that alleyway when you were both kids. Small little kittens. You, a tiny little orange cat. Your brother, a black and white cat. It's raining and cold and you were all alone. You both just crawled out of your wooden box to look for food as your stomachs growl. The local fisherman just dumped a bunch of old fish guts into a dumpster right nearby. You are both kittens and can barely walk. But you know that you have to work together to get all the way up to that dumpster again. But last time, there was only enough food to feed one of you, and you ended up fighting over it. Your brother walks on four legs out into the rain and looks back at you and says, well, what are you waiting for? I'm hungry. As I replied back to him, you know damn well there isn't enough for the both of us. Well, there could be. You don't know that. I think that whoever is stronger is going to be the one that eats tonight. Well, if we don't work together to get inside of that dumpster, neither of us are going to eat. All right. You make a compelling point. Why don't you go ahead and give me a boost up? Okay. He waddles over to the dumpster in the rain, fur soaked, wet. He turns around and holds out his two paws, ready for you to jump up inside, hoping and believing that you will help him inside once you get up there. And he's like, okay, I'm trusting you. Don't screw me on this. And you see as a side shot of Felix's tiny little body running through puddles of rain and then leaping off the tiny Welcome pink to balls. the nerd herd, you dang nerd. Hey, Rupert. Hey. Okay, buddy. Intense Bring moment. For one. Cheers, dog. Cheers, boys. <coughs> Let's get boys. And then you... Want you Okay, I want you to roll me in acrobatics though as well. To see if it actually worked. This is the Lion King, is it? Alright, that, my friend, is a success. Uh, that's a dirty 20. It is, you got a plus 5. What is a success? I'm big on my face. Why are you so big, Dice? Damn. Damn, calm down, Dice. Oh, that good. It's okay. Bringing up to the top of the dumpster. I look back down at my pitiful brother. Knowing that he probably wouldn't survive at least another two full moons if I don't even help him eat now. Without looking inside the dumpster, I lean a paw down. Dirty, dirty, oh so dirty. 
Thank you for 20 bits. You try to help him up. He's gonna jump and try to grab your hand. I want you to roll me a strength save with your weak little frail kitten body to be able to lift your brother up into the dumpster. Right, that's be a strength a check. Seven. That's but a it, seven. I, would I have pluses being a kitten? I wouldn't think so, right? Yeah. 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 We'll just use your yeah. stat sheet. Oh. It's fine, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a ten, baby. He jumps. He grabs your hand. You're both struggling. Oh. He's like wiggling. He's like, don't let me go, Felix. And you're like looking down at him as the rain is just on his face. You're pulling with all your might. And it's so difficult to be able to pull him up. <laughs> the rain boils down on you with your strength. The dumpster is wet. And you're starting to kind of Bless lose you. your footing. But then, you get strength from Rumto. Oh. And you manage to pull your brother up to the top of the dumpster before you drop him. Plus two. And then you almost drop him. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you make him up to the top before almost dropping him. And then you both stand there. You can see there is a small rusted hole in this dumpster from the rain and from the years that you could both fit through to get down into the inside. No telling if you'll be able to get out once you get in there. He walks over and looks down into the darkness. And he's like, well, do you want to go first? Nah. I think I'll let you have this opportunity. The jagged edges of the dumpster of the rust kind of go all the way around this little circle. Almost perfect and big enough for his little body to fit through. And as he jumps down into the hole, you hear him kind of squeak and, and, and yell out in pain. As he jumps down, a piece of the rust grabs onto his face and rips a bunch of his fur off. And you can see on the rusted little hole, little pieces of fur left behind as he hits the bottom and continues whining out in pain. Well, is there any food in there? I don't know. I can't see. Felix, my face, it hurts. Well, what happened? It got caught you... on the on the spot on this on the rust I'm gonna need a tetanus <laughs> I'm sorry but tetanus hasn't been developed for at least a few different multiverses <laughs> I don't I don't think you're gonna make it I mean you gotta you help me really we're gonna make it uh, don't Is talk there like any that. food in there I can smell fish guts, yes. Well, maybe... Maybe you'll do off just a little bit better staying inside there. I would like to... Is there, like, is there like little crates that are, like, on top of the dumpster that are, like, empty? Sure. Yeah. Felix goes over to a stack of crates and starts nudging it and pushing as hard as he can. Pushing tetanus. the crate closer and closer to the hole. Tetanus is not what you want. Did Felix cast healing? I. Uh, this is totally improv, so this could be a big origin a 15, story. And this is uh this is a back, uh, back, uh, a time back. I can't think of the name for it. A backflash? A flashback. There it flashback. is. Got it. Yeah. 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 I wonder if I if I have something that can help. It's a backflash, everybody. Oh, I think it's the wrong one. No desaturation contrast. You should. Gets a scratch. Well, I guess I'll die now. Hey, you know what? There you go. <laughs> it's kind of gray, so it's like flash. Turn up your turn up your exposure. Your brightness. Exposure. 
Uh, I'm trying to do it just through color. Yeah. Oh. Color correction. Yeah. You know what? Fuck it. Let's turn it off. We've made it this far. Okay. Heal. And, and he pushes the crank. I think it's it's heals now because of the the avatar command heal. Um, so it's heals with an S, but also would not work abstractly. Continue, Felix. Felix pushes the crates. And I can hear my brother out there crying. All right. Or Continue. in there. Asking me, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And I say, so long, brother. You know you're going to die in the streets. Maybe just die with a full belly. As he pushes the crates over the hole. And that was the last time I saw him. That was also the last day I spent that dreadful night in that box. And that's when I left. I went out searching for whatever I can make of my own. So I'm no longer eating fish guts from a dumpster that I have to share with insolent fucking siblings. God right. damn. God damn fucking ruthless. All right, that's that. Now. I don't know if you guys know how tabaxi culture works, but when you grow up in a litter of eight, nobody gives a fuck. We flash back now. Wrong, you can turn off silhouette. <laughs> Every time we see you. We flash back now to you guys standing around the pool <clears throat> as your brother just skated his way up to you. Now, before we can move forward, we need a name for your brother. And we're going to let you pick it. Felix, but we're gonna allow chat to throw out names into chat. Now, no combo names, no nothing. We're taking them straight. So, if you guys in chat would like to use the name a thing command to give Felix, Felix's brother, a name, please do so. But remember, his last, his last name, his last name is Fieldgar. Yes, Helix. Fuck, certifiable. Bronze. Good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Sounds like how my cats treat each other. Yeah. Cheers Dad. From the waist, everybody. Dad field god. Or is it dead field god? Mmm. It is dead. It looked like an A to me. Frankie. Welcome mm. to the nerd herd. You dead nerd? Last war pool. No. What's up? Last dog? war pool. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for the sub, dude. Cheers. You're the bro. last of the war poodles. Mm. Personally, I don't like dogs, but that's just me. True. Okay, you've got four names. Do you want to wait a little bit more? Or do you want to pick from the list? Uh, I mean, I want a, I want a, I want a variety. Shane. Howdy. Mephitan. Mephitan. I think Certifiable killed it right off the get-go. Helix is such a good name. Yeah. Helix Field Guy. Nice certified. Solid one. Are we taking it? Yeah. Alright. Helix Field Guy. We flash back now to you two standing around the pool with a bunch of your other students. As he lands in front of you and says, Hello, brother. Well, it's. Oh, wait, I gotta do the voice. Hello, brother. It's good to see you. I just started here at Strongheart University as a freshman. I joined Jace's team for the Mage Tower game, and I decided I was going to show him some of my skills. Wow. I'm surprised you ever made it out of that dumpster, brother. Well, it wasn't long before a fisherman came along and... Went to go dump more fish guts into there and found me, saved me, cleaned my face. You love this scar that you left me? I wear no, it I didn't every do day. Ah. Keep telling yourself that, brother. Well. How'd you Who's... even get into the magic college? Well, it turns out just like you, they were looking for diversity. So they let me in this year. Maybe they thought that you weren't good enough and you were going to disappoint them. 
So they let me in, as talented as I am, Helix Fieldgar, to come in and kind of take over. Oh, you aren't taking over shit. Especially if you're running with Jace and all of his fucktard friends. Well, I guess we'll have to see about that, huh? I guess so. Who's your friend with the fine mustache? Hi, uh, I'm Rock. Nice to meet you. Watch out for Felix. He'll leave you in a dumpster for dead. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, um, a bunch of- 1203 says, let this be a lesson to all. <clears throat> Write your backstory so the DM doesn't make one up for you. Cheers. Why well, let him improv on it? You know what I mean? Like, I wanted it to, you know, yeah, you kind of I like... mean, my story was always that I came from a box in a back alley from a litter of eight other fucking cats that nobody gave a shit about. Because tabaxi culture is fucking whack inside of Intoxica. True. But, you know, it's not like I came up with any of that Udi. Yeah, I let the DM write it for me. <laughs> yeah, you gave me Alleyway. I remember that. And also lots and lots and lots of brothers and sisters. Now, do you guys take some of the skates and kind of skate around a little bit here before you finish off what you're doing? Um, a bunch of your friends are all around. This could be a great opportunity to impress any of them and get any kind of relationship points with them, whether that be good or bad. Um, oh, yeah. that sounds I rad. I, re I just want to shred, really, and I'm going to answer Certifiable's question is, yes, I used to have paws until they got burned off. Ah. My hands really haven't regrown the hair since then, so, uh, yeah. And one of my paws may be missing in action for God knows where it's at. Yeah, you know, kids and what have you. And, uh... Yeah. But, all right, so what do? Would you like to powwow together about this brother thing? You don't like your brother, do you? No, well, I mean, last time I saw him, like, kind of left him for dead. Yes or no question. You don't like your brother, uh, do you? That's a definite yes thing. Okay, powwow concluded. <laughs> powwow. Yeah, I like Ronk. He's not a very emotional guy, really. Nope. He's like, we got the no, details. Not really. Yeah. Always losing shit. Shame! This is called upon by Weenus the Great. Shame. Alright. I'll remember that next time I hear some type of thing. Oh, Jack Joe, where is my and I'll be like, mmm, shame. Alright, that's fair. Alright, uh yeah, do you guys skate around a little bit? Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I'm gonna shred this shit up. There are a bunch of like skates and stuff off to the corner, like makeshift ass skates. If you would like to impress any one of your fellow peers, please let me know who it is, and we can make a roll on it. If you don't want to impress anybody and you just want to skate around, that's cool. If you would like to do some cool shit and see how well you perform, you're more than welcome to roll me an acrobatics or an athletics check to see um, how you actually perform in this here situation. Maybe you're a really good skater. We don't know. Yeah, I'm just want to skate around. I don't. I'm not 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 necessarily trying to impress anybody, but I am trying to pull off some crazy shit. Nice, bro. Hell yeah! You whip on them skates, then you hop down into the pool and get ready to skate. Go on ahead and roll me in athletics or acrobatics. Up to you. That's not what I wanted. There we go. It's not very good. No. Nah, that's not very good at all, turns out. You got a six, you have, um... What plus it, like two. Plus two. Yeah, okay, so you skate Give around. the dice. Alright, go ahead, re-roll. You got a re-roll from Certifiable. Give it and give it. Yeah, that's even better. Oh, wait, oh, that's some oh my god. Nope. It's even worse. You skate around and fall in the pool a little bit. A couple of your peers kind of giggle at you. And then you hop out of the pool kind of disappointed in yourself. Deck of Drunken Things, activate. Ooh. Before you go to skate, Felix, please roll me 1d100. And again, if you guys would like to um, 
check out the list. Use the exclamation point card list. I got a 40 tree. Wild magic. Roll on the wild magic Shit. chart. Roll me another 1d100. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. A 51. Okay. Some random numbers. 51. For 10 minutes, you gain resistance to all non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Ah, oh, sick. So, so if I eat shit, it's not going to hurt. If you eat shit, it's not going to hurt. Yep. Ah, oh, sick. All right. Um, so I want to, like, I want to, is it Stand. skate or skateboard? <laughs> Felix, I'm keeping Damn. shit where you can't find it. Give us a speech, Felix. <laughs> I love the chaos right now. Y'all coming back with a bang. Thank you, guys. The Nerd Herd community is the best. You guys rock. All right. The reason why I can't find my shit is because I also have tiny two little kittens that also live in the same box that I do. Now, they don't know how to stay out of my fucking shit, so they kind of... Everything's just everywhere, and I just try to have a good memory on where things are or used to be at and not actually giving them a place or home inside here. Because if I do that, well, they're obviously not going to stay there. Mm. Yes. All right. That's fair. All right. All right. Roll me your athletics. Ah, but wait. Is there any hot babes by the pool watching us? Um, The characters that are there um, that you know of include Claire, Nightflower, Cherry, Erland, Hacko Sunfire, Big Kim Slade, Jace, Hazel, Slurp, Chester, Whitney Houston, and Carmen San Diego. But they'd probably have a couple little crew members with them was if it, you're looking for someone extra. Cherry and Eric Cochran? Um, no. Cherry was this lovely lass right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to look at her and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wink. And then I'm going to drop into the pool and try to shred so I look all like, you know, uh, like seductive a cool skating. Yeah. Yeah. Now you said I needed a what? Acrobatics athletics? or athletics. Yeah, up to you. If well, you're going to do like way, up in the air shit, then ac acrobatics. Oh, yeah. Sure. Totally doing some vert shit. We're doing 360 Christ stairs. We're doing fucking uh, melon grabs. And then like, oh, yeah. But I got a dirty 20. Fuck yeah. It's fucking badass. You do a bunch of cool shit. She's thoroughly impressed. You like land on the outside and you look over at your brother and he's like, of course. We would both be natural skaters. He's kind of like Jesus. He gives you that eyeball. And Cherry standing next to him kind of like takes a step away and looks at you and winks back. But just as that happens, the master chef. You've seen him. You know of him. Wrong. His name is Jerome. He is a troll. He steps out of the back of the tavern with the door that was propped open. And he yells at everyone to leave. So dirty, your brother got dirt in his eye. So dirty, your brother got dirt in his eye. Cheers, Odie. Cheers. Jerome, the troll, steps out. He's the master chef on the campus here. 107, Debbie, what the fuck? 107? That was weird. Cheers, Debbie! Cheers. Thank you. The Master Chef Jerome the Troll steps out of the back of the tavern and yells at everyone to leave. Everyone begins to start scattering, running in different directions, chopping over fences, and getting the fuck out of there. What do you two do? Um. Is there a way that, like, I could drop in to, to the pool and then, and then, like, uh, like, kind of, like, vault out of it onto, like, uh, one of the roofs nearby? <clears throat> that's gonna can take, that's gonna be smoke? a hard AC on that check there, bud, but you can roll me acrobatics. You can do it. You can try. Yeah, I totally, I want to, yeah. I want to skate my yeah. way out of this. Now, situation. before you make your roll, Ronk, what do you do? Uh, I think I'm just going to run away with the rest of the guys. All right. Felix, make your roll. I'm going to drop into the pool and say, cheese it. Oh, no, I rolled a three. You Sweet. totally <laughs> fall down on your face, but you're resistant to bludgeoning damage. So you take no damage. Congrats. 
Just right. as you are running away, Ronk, the troll grabs Give you. A dice. <laughs> Go ahead and re-roll it. He grabs you by the shirt. He looks over at you and he says, I've been looking for you. Meet me in the home ec room. We have things to discuss. Ronk. Okay. He lets go so of your shirt, kind of like pushing you away. He's huge. He's a troll. He's huge, and he pushes you away. And as you're walking away, you hear him. He, he kind of goes, Disappointed. I thought he was better than that. Oh. Now, Felix, go ahead and roll your dice. Uh, I got a 13. He's 13. disappointed. All right, so you land kind of like on the roof. It's not very graceful. And then you jump off down on the other side, meeting back up with Ronk. You guys then begin your headway over to the Biblioplex to meet Professor Woodslobber and Eddie, now that the sun is beginning to set. Now, when we return, we're going to see what the fuck they have to say. But before we do, we're going to do fucking thumbnail poses. Y'all fuckers know it. So if you have any ideas for thumbnail poses, if you want to throw them into chat, please go on ahead and do. We like to use these for memes and funds and extra shit and, like, promotional shit and just, like, we love to have these. Like, if, let's say, in a future season, I'm like, oh, I really need a good picture of this character to bring them back, and uh, then I fucking have it. So, yeah. And if you guys have any ideas, make sure to throw them in there. Uh, dropping your brother. Dropping your brother? Uh, Fonzie posting. Hey, oh, oh, like the Fonz. That's because of that mustache. <laughs> All right. Um, fucking wonderful. You guys did a good Fonz pose. I hope someone got a good screenshot of that. If you did, please make sure to post it in the Discord. We're going to be right back in 10 minutes, everybody, to continue on this lovely story. Yeah, we'll be right back. Going through a haunted house. Ooh, save that for next. Entertainment. Oh, yeah. Hello! Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to Drunks and Dragons. This is the full costume comedy D&D show on the Grouch Couch right here on Twitch. That's right. For those of you guys who are just joining us, we did start an hour early today, so you're going to have to check the VOD if you missed any of the fun little shit. And there was actually a fun little backstory thing that happened today if you're interested. I'm Turkey. That's right, Dungeon Master Turkey. Uh, fuck DM Turk from Sidequesters. That guy's an a-hole. Pick your side, nerds. Sidequesters are Drunks and Dragons, all right? Pick your fucking side. Gallop. Now, Sorry. I'm joined here with Connor and Fishy, the lovely players for tonight's episode. That's right, lovely, lovely lads. Now, before we get into the show, it's tradition to crack open something and cheers before we get back in. I've only had one of those nice beers, so now I'm drinking some Rolling Cock. All right, Rolling Cock will get the oh. job done. We drink it when we have to. Rolling Cock will yeah. get the this job done. This is actually also leftover from Wasteland, because I really didn't drink a lot while I was there. Wasteland drinks. That's just like what I'm drinking. Wasteland Monster. Brought to you yeah. part five from the waste. After Next the world week. ends, we go out and party around a bunch of junk. <laughs> That's right. Next week, the vlog will also be up from our trip up on YouTube, so make sure to check that shit out. Well, subscribe to our YouTube, you nerds. Doing okay? Have a pile of work the next two weeks. Dang. Dang, that shit happened. I'm going to try to figure out everybody. It was good. Yeah. Swear to gosh. Okay, so we're going to get right back into the show. And I would like Connor and Fishy, would like both of you guys to do me a roll to see who is going to do the recap. That's right. Uh, the beer was sticky, I bro. Lose. Disgusting. Damn it. What the fuck, man? <laughs> this is what I get a nat 20 on? This is bullshit. <laughs> Out of all the things I could have gotten a nat 20 on. Do this it, is... nerd. All right, put on your um... fucking head and do us a recap. Let's go. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I'll have to do the recap, and then I'll have to mute myself because there's a stinky baby. But, you know, the things of being an a, a parent. A parent. That's right. Also, cheers, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Galasia, Odie, Big Jim, yeah, Last War Poodle. Hello. Activate. All right, Ronk. Remember, remind me. You're after the recap. Roll me 1d100. All right. What you guys just missed in the past hours of uh, the Dragon. No, no. Thanks, Odie. Thanks, thanks Odie. Thanks, Odie. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> 
We just found out that Felix is actually a ruthless ass bastard coming from a tabaxi culture of poor and just poverty. Tabaxi culture doesn't allow for caring the feelings of one another, siblings, families, and pretty much anyone. Pause. We have to make. Play! We have to make it our way through life on our own and through our own strength and perseverance. So we had a very scary flashback of where actually seeing Felix had to toss his own brother to uh, the death itself, coming to find out that even he survived and was able to make it into the college as well. So very scary. And then after that, we found this sick ass pool that they were draining out. So we're going to do some magic shredding. Rung fell on his face pretty hard, but I fucking killed it and impressed this sweet babe named Cherry. So I know what my eyes now on. How about you? And right. Thank you for watching Drugs and Dragons. Right. Thank you for watching Drugs and Dragons. We now return with Ronk, lovely lad, and Felix as they're heading to the Biblioplex to meet up with Professor uh, Buck Woodslobber and Eddie the Donkey. Now, as you guys approach the Biblioplex, you can see out front, Ronk, will you roll me 1d100, please? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 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 23. 23. Way to the world! You must roll a deck save every 10 minutes for the next 30 minutes or you fall over. Starting now, roll me a deck save. Welcome to the nerd herd, you dang nerd! I got a plus it? two, so it's Baptized a in pus. Ten. Sweet. Right. You succeed. Sweet baptized! Dude, what is that? A year? Holy shit, a fucking year baptized! Brother man! Cheers to the year. Cheers. Dan, it's been good to know you for this whole year, bro. Thank you for being part of the nerd herd for a whole fucking year. Dan, cheers, brother. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Okay, a ten. You succeed. As you guys approach the Biblioplex, you can see Professor Bud Buck Woodslobber, of course, low on the ground as he is a beaver folk, and Eddie standing together. Eddie's head is completely down as he is eating grass, and Professor Wook Buck Woodslobber stands on the other side of him. As you approach, what is the hotkey for this? I don't remember. It's been a while. No. No. There it is. Okay, we got hotkeys now. Felix? Felix? Hello? Where'd Hello? it go? I know, we wait. Every time I try to do good, I cause bad chaos. I know, Galatia, it's wild. That list, you gotta read it. It's a mix of good and bad. And I think on wild magic, if they get a hundred, I think they gain a level. But if they get a one, they lose a level. Like, that's kind of the way we're playing. He's changing the litter box. Yeah, dude, yeah, he fucking is, yeah. Jeez. All right, welcome back. Yeah, back. Yeah. <coughs> As you approach, Professor Buck Woodslava speaks up. Hello, Ronk. Um, what was your last name again? Uh, grove. 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 You know, like a grove. Oranges. Yes, yes, I know what a grove is, yes, yes. Mr. Grove and Mr. Fielga, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty uh, good. Been a weird day. Except uh, uh, I fell down at a pool and I can't seem to keep my balance that well every 10 minutes well i cannot assist with this but i wish you luck in your endeavors i must say first of all i found your flyers for the breakfast club littering the school no, littering not, and it's not, it's not littering littering and, 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 and 
Yes, well, they've blown off walls, and now they're just fucking everywhere. So please make sure to clean up your fucking Stand. mess. Stand. Give us a speech. Give us a speech. Ah, uh, I don't know why it went off twice. Beaver folk on what a grove is. Okay. Well, a grove is a grove is a grove. Currently littered with flyers from the breakfast club. Uh, a grove is a place uh, that you go where places and things grow. I'm from rivers mostly. I like to build dams. I like to stop the flow of water, cause fuck that water. Fuck it. Right? Ain't no water gonna flow around me. I'm gonna stop that water from flowing. Especially into a grove. I hope this was satisfactory. Now. Learning of some of these strange occurrences that you have experienced recently, and with your wish to free this donkey of his curse, I believe that these two things may be linked. Okay. So, uh, how can we help him? Well, there used to be a student here, but for the life of me, I cannot remember his name. I think it may have started with an M. Not sure. But from what I have found, there is a book that may be able to help you with your research. It may give you some information. Okay, great. Like, like knowledge? Yes, knowledge. You know, I like more than all my Lamborghinis. Knowledge. I read a book a day. Now. The name of this book, do you have notes? You're going to need to write this down. I have my notebook, but nothing to write with. Mm. Hold up, Professor Woodslobber. Yes, please hurry. I have much wood that needs to be slobbered. They had a book. Not, not necessarily sure where it's at. <laughs> Low place reference. <laughs> Drove by any other name would taste as woody. Yes, it would. Certifiable. Yes. The number is six hundred and sixty-six. Yes. Alrighty. Well, that doesn't sound right. Now, whenever you're around me from the future, please make sure to always be aware that you will be taking notes, for I am full of knowledge. Uh, not only whenever you're in class, Mr. Grove and Mr. Fieldgar, but if you are prepared to pass my class this semester as sophomore students here at the Strongheart University, you must always be taking notes. Now, the name of this book is Wheel or Woe, an interpretive sketch, spelled W-E-A-L-E. As in Western, Eastern, Alpha, Love, Eastern, or Woe, as in Western, Orangutan, Eastern. An interpretive sketch. Yes, that is the name of the book. Now, the librarians confirm that the book is located in the Scriptoria collections on the lower floor of the Biblioplex. Hence why I have brought you here on this day. Penis! Yes, penises. Now please keep it down in my class or I will have you suspended. It's not us. It's, it's fucking... Oh god, what was his name? Damn it. Mm. Never. I got both of you a single hour pass to search for it. But fucking if anyone asks... It. That's if anyone asks, you are down there doing homework for your homeroom class with Mr. Buck Woodslobber. Understood? Okay. I... Now, uh, if I, uh, yes, Mr. I don't Fieldgar. know if I could actually do that. Why? Uh, after compelling magic that has been casted upon me this day, mm. I can't really lie. A curse, you say? Hmm. Guess a curse is a good way to put it. <sighs> well, just don't fucking open your mouth then, Mr. Fieldgar. 
Yes. Good job okay. on taking notes, Ronk. Yes. And everything yeah, I take say. notes. I always take notes in your class, just like this. Uh, white blank yeah, piece of paper. Yeah. Nice, mm. Ronk. Ah, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Very good drawing, Ronk. Very good, very good. Now, please hey. remember the name of that book, because I will not be there to help remind you the name of it. Now you have a single hour pass to search the Scriptoria collections on the bottom floor. Do not tell anybody that it was I that gave you the things. And if I was you, I would search other books while you were there. Because this student was known for hanging out there, you may learn some extra information. And all of these people may be hiding something from us. <sighs> all right, you, you got all that wrong? Yeah, just can't figure out my nose. Uh, well, as long as we find the Book of Woe, I think we should be fine. Actually, no. Wheel or Woe, an interpretive scripture. <laughs> Close enough. Once you have the book, bring it to me and we will see about breaking this donkey's curse. Although I don't really understand, but um, good luck. You will find me in my room. Please bring wood. Thank you. Uh, okay. You are Aye. dismissed. You are dismissed. Oh, sorry. My bad. Okay. Um, yes, a lot of information. Big ol' information dump there from Professor Buck Woodslobber. God, I love him so much. My fucking spirit animal, that guy. Mm -hmm. He has no emotion. <laughs> Both of you stand in your hand a one hour pass to go down to the Scriptoria Collections. You have a one hour pass. You hold them both in your hands. You have seen the signs from the Biblioplex before. You know the way there. You currently stand on the outside with Eddie the donkey attached to his cart. Head down, not magically infused. Currently just eating grass. Do you guys head right inside? Or is there anything you would like to prepare or do before you go? Uh, can I shave my beard off? It's kind of choking me. Yes, you're welcome yeah. to do that. Yeah. Right, thanks. Bring him an issue of Naughty Wood. Great centerfold. Thanks. God, it's killing me. <laughs> now, would you say this is a uh, an adventure we should have preparations for, or just a nice stroll through a library? I don't know. As being a experienced adventurer, what do you think? Probably gonna need some shit. Yeah, because I feel like the last couple of times we've gone on. Uh, simple missions or even a stroll. We've been in some tough situations. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Fair. Uh, could we go by the general store? Yes. Store of general general store. Fuck, I don't remember what the name of that place is. I am double checking. Isn't that manned by Big Kim Slay? Yeah. Kim Slade. We shoot over here. Nothing's different. I know. It's wild. Yes. Um, here we go. <clears throat> yes. You rush over to the general goods store in the Biblioplex before you head down the stairs to the area. On the inside sits Big Kim Slade from Big Kim Slade Gaming. She's organizing things on a shelf behind her. She sees you, she turns around, and she goes, Oh, hello, guys. Uh, what can I do you for? Um, like, what kind of uh, adventure supplies would you need, Ronk? Well, I don't know about me, but I know you probably need a lot of healing potions. Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to pick up some of those. Not yeah, unless you have something else in the magical item range of, like, you know, 
like random healing, cast of healing? Mm, well, I um, I don't know. I've got locks. I've got clothes. I've got hammers, ink pens, pitchers, lamps, uh, mess kits, mirrors, paper, parchment, picks, pots, pouches, ropes, rope. Sacks, scales, shovels, rings, soaps, and vials. I think we came to the wrong store. No, I've got other things. That's just my random general good. Ah. Uh, what about your uh, health potion department? Ah, my health potion department. My, yes, I have potion of healing. And, uh, you know... We've been friends for a long time. I bet those wouldn't cost me too much, huh? Hmm? Yeah, I can give you the, you know, the cheap price of 38 gold apiece. 38 Well, they're normally 50. I, are you sure you couldn't go lower? Like, I, what yeah. if we do a... Uh, buy two... What if I buy two of them at 25 apiece? Ah, roll me persuasion. I wonder if casting Shillelagh just before giving Buck Woodslaw a length of wood would add a flavor or break his teeth. Ooh. I got a 15. Okay. I could do two, 25 apiece. All right. See, see, was that so hard? Give the hard. dice. You Maybe son looks... of a bitch. It might be hard now. Quote ad. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I also have acid, I've got antitoxin, caltrops, clothes, manacles, oil, poison, ram, spikes, disguise kits, forgery kits, gaming sets, dice sets, prisoners kits, and thieves tools. I've got a two-person tent, a sack, a robe, a pouch, component pouch, I've got uh, traveler's clothes, fine clothes, costume clothes, and others clothes. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just take one healing potion. Okay. 38. 38. 38 gold. gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And make sure your character sheet's updated because we did take a long rest beforehand, so you should still be at max. Mwahaha! <laughs> Student ID discount, right? <laughs> okay. Can I do yeah. you guys for anything else? Some ball bearings, no, bell, no, block and tackle, crowbar, chain, grappling hook, hammer, hunting trap, lamp, lantern, lantern hooded, lock, manacles, mirror, steel, a pick, a pitten, a pot, spikes, whetstone, artisan's tools, carpenter's tools, mason tools, smith's tools, tinkerer's tools, or a musical instrument of a horn. Uh, how much is your grappling hook? Where did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably in the alpha type order. It is two gold. Well, I'll, I'll I'll take a grappling hook. I feel like you know when you're in a library, when are you gonna most need a grappling hook? That's true. When you're in a yeah. Especially in an underground library. Yeah. Okay, you guys done here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Hold on. Can can we? Oh no, because we're the only ones. Do we only have one pass per piece? Is yeah. it like a paper pass? Yeah. Damn it. Why? Ronk, how good are you at forgery? Uh, not sure, but um, let me focus on not falling down for a second. Yeah, roll me a deck safe. Good shit, Ronk. You're good. Yep. Uh, what was the question? Uh, how good is your forgery? Uh, probably not that good. Uh, what what skill would that be? I I think a sleight of hand skill. I I don't know because I don't know if I'd be good at forgery. What if we what if we get like oh we need a kit for that? Is that something that she sold? I, I, it wasn't something I was necessarily trying to listen for. Uh, I'm, I'm a carpenter's tools, right mason tools, tinker's tools, messenger's tools, um, nearest deal. 
Uh, books, candles. Um, Jesus, she has so much stuff. Um, partner tools. Here we go. Carpenter's tools, cobbler's tools. Um, whoops. Glassboards to his leather workers, potter smiths, weavers, wood carvers. Um, you need a forgery kit, I think. I believe. I believe. A forgery something. A forgery. Forgery. Well, for sure you would need pen and ink and pen for sure. Uh, now I want to know uh, what they're fucking good for, not how many I have. Oh, shut up, trash can. Um, Herbalier's kit. Cartographer's tools, tinkerer's tools. We're getting somewhere. Navigator's tools. I'm sorry, yeah. guys. This is a bit of a tangent. It's totally cool. This would be super easy for like an artificer who could just duplicate things, right? But I'm trying yeah. to see if there's a way for you to do it um, just like outright. You would think a forgery's kit would just be like some paper and some like. Yes. Ink Forgery shit, kit. Right? Yes. I've it's got just it a here. pen. Yes. It's, I've just, got it. it's just a pen. It's a small box that contains a variety of papers, parchments, pens, ink, seals, seal wax, gold and silver leaf, and other supplies necessary to create convincing forgeries of physical documents. Proficiency with this kit lets you allow add your proficiency bonus to any ability checks you make to create a physical forgery of a document. Is that what you're looking for? Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need one of those. Is that, are they expensive? I still don't have it on the price list. I don't think she actually sells it, but I'm going to pretend that she does. Because forgery in the college, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, okay. I, I would assume it would be like, like close to secretively, she's like, okay, I'll give it to you, but it's going to cost you five gold. Oh, six sauce. Yeah, shut you get up. one of those bad boys. Okay. Unless I actually fucking find it on here. There's a lot of shit on here. Okay. Now, what do? Uh, I would like to forge one of the passes. Okay. Why what? forge? Just so you could have another one? An extra? Yeah. Yeah, because I want to ask somebody to come with us. Now, these are magical passes. But it's going to take a high roll to be able to do this. Now, you are not proficient in this. Um, I'm pretty fucking sure. Unless you took the proficiency in this. Um, so, yeah. I think it will be a sleight of hand check to do it perfectly. Right. Yeah, five gold pieces of fucking steel. A 24. All right. You succeed. You make an extra one. And you make an extra. Sweet. Rung, before we go, we should ask Cherry to come with us. She knows a lot about books and stuff and might be able to help two, us two dumb guys. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, right? right. Can we go to the, uh, the female dormitory? Sure. Are we allowed to? That's yeah. not even... We literally I mean, there, live with so... female. What are you yeah, on the college, about? there isn't really female dormitories. Everyone's just sanctioned in their own areas. Are you talking on about Rosalie? Depending on what Never colleges really they take. Yeah. Kind of more of like mm -hmm. a... But, yeah, thankfully, you see her on the quad uh, as you're yeah. leaving. She's, she's already headed into the biblioplex. Oh, hey, hey, Cherry. Hey, hey, Cherry. Cherry. What's up, Hi. baby? Hey. Hey. How's it going? So... Me and Ronk, coolest shit ever. Uh, uh -huh. We're given some uh, underground passes to the lower decks of the biblioplex to go and look for some rad ass books. And mm -hmm. uh, I was, you know, we had an extra one, and I thought of you when um, I saw you skating earlier today. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, the Scriptoria collections, I've always wanted to be in there, but I've never had a pass. So, like, I'm down to go. Also, yeah, Felix can't lie. He's like, you can't lie, Felix. Was all that truthful? I think it was. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we have an extra pass. I thought of her because I was skating earlier. 
And uh, we're going down to the lower decks to go look for books. None of that was a lie. Oh, you didn't have an extra one. You made an extra one. Oh, words and semantics certifiable. Hey, Whatever. 1d4. Take the damage, nerd. Yeah, I rolled a two. All right. Bzz. She's ah. like, okay. Uh, well, I um, yeah, I would love to go down there with y'all. Well, uh, well, come on along. Uh, God knows what we'll find down there. Hopefully, just books. Yeah. Yeah, and you okay. know, it's uh, it's a nice day Let to be underground. Get up the student stat sheet for her. See, I'm not saying anything certifiable, so I don't think, I don't think forgery would be lying. Uh, yeah. That's exactly it's just what copying. forgery is. True. Is it? What's the definition of Roll forgery? Roll me 1d4, nerd. <laughs> Fuck it, damn it. <laughs> One. And I don't think false documents are technically a lie. Are they? Bzz. You take it the one. It has false documents inside the name. <laughs> but is that a lie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. All right, you head into the biblioplex with Cherry. Um, she willfully is excited to go with you. As you get to the stairs that wind down at the very top, there is a small little thing. Um, that accepts tickets. On the top it says admit one, and it's perfectly slotted to fit your ticket on the inside. There's like a gate across it. I, I do want to make sure that I, I gave her the actual, like, pass. I have I have the forgery pass. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, so... Uh, are you going first, Ronk? You wanna sure. uh, slide, slide yours in? All right, you slide it in with ease. The gate opens. You step onto the other side, and the gate shuts. Cool. Cherry does the same. <laughs> opens and shuts. Felix, you go to put yours in, and it's kind of misshapen a little bit because you did it with a different kind of paper. I want you to roll me a sleight of hand to see if it works. Uh, that's a 12. Okay. God damn, you got an 8 to sleight of hand. It works. Okay. The gate opens. You step on the inside and it closes. As you two make your way, drink. Won a game. As you two make your way down the winding staircase, the passage gloom gives way to warm light. The room before you is a spacious, let me change the background. The room before you is a spacious and comfortable room with gleaming bookcases, wide tables, luxurious chairs, and an inviting lounge. It also has a heart. There are oil paintings of breathtaking landscapes and heroic spellcasters that line the walls and antique spherical astrolobes are proudly displayed along the northern wall. And, guess what, nerds? Nice I've got map. an actual map. I've got a no, map I've of this. I've got a map on the wall, too. Nice, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it home. Runk, look at my new wall decor. It's pretty cool. Tight. Tight. As you guys step down here, what do you do, Runk? I want you to go first. What do you do, Ron? Well, I think I'm going to start scanning the bookshelves to the right. Go down that L corridor, you know. Okay. My boy is going to start scanning these here bookshelves. I'm cool with that. Now, as you are searching for these bookshelves, Ron, roll me a perception. Got. You got bonuses to that? Uh, it's uh, uh, 14. 14. As you're searching among 
the other books in the collections here is a tome. You kind of pull it out, it stands out a little bit to you. Shillelagh on ticket makes it magical. Oh dang, that went off a little while ago, huh, didn't it? So laggy, I'm sorry. It's okay. That helps though, Otis, thank you. That would have helped his role. Interesting, I roll up a newspaper and magazine. Shillelagh. There you go. Okay, back to this. There is a collection, that, a tome that stands out to you. The tome reads about magical creatures. The author seems to be someone by the name of Eric Quanthorm himself. Any character, all right, that pulls out this book, you are free to read this book if you would like. It stands out to you and may have some information on what you have going on. Yeah, I'll start reading it. All right. I would like to say you kind of step over to the side here and sit at one of the tables and start reading. Uh, Felix? To he... Uh, I'm just... Uh, I'm uh, for a book. I, uh, yeah. All right. Play. Just, uh, uh, now, what, are, what book is this? Roll me perception first, you nerd. Um, you're getting ahead of me. You're getting ahead of me. Sorry. I'm trying to stay on the ball. Oh. That's a, that's a eight. Okay. You do not find the book you are looking for, but you do find a book about someone called Quinthorn. It seems familiar because it's the author of the book that Ronk is currently reading. It's called Quinthorn's History. It is full of different all kinds of information, and you think maybe it'll teach you a little something about something if you would like to read it. Am I supposed to roll to read? No, nah, dude, just tell me. Do you want to read or not? Oh, yeah, I'm totally reading. Yeah. All right. And our friend begins searching the bookshelves herself. Now, you guys spend a little bit of time reading these books, um, at least 10 minutes, eating up 10 minutes of your one hour of time. As you read this book, Ronk, the one you're reading, you learn that during... Quinthor's time as an administrator, Director Quinthorn discovered creatures lurking off campus called Mage Hunters. The tome provides sketches of chitinous plates matching the character's armor. The tome states that pairs of Mage Hunters would break with their allies to hunt specific individuals whom catch their attention under the leadership of some unknown figure. Now, whether you put this information together with what you have going on and what the book says is yet to be told. I would like you to roll me a wisdom save. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got no idea. Got no idea. This is a book. <laughs> Are you okay? All right, so you tell Felix this is a book. Now, Felix, you spend 10 minutes studying the other book, and you discover information that kind of sheds some light on the current situation. It seems that director Quinthorn wrote about a student who practiced bizarre magic while attending Strixhaven during Quinthor's tenure as an administrator almost Give 200 years dice. ago. You got a reroll, Ronk. Um, during... His tenure as an administrator almost 200 years ago, this student used magic to siphon energy wow. and life from creatures. Wow. A one to a fucking wow. 20. Cheers, everybody. That rarely ever wow. happens. Wow. Cheers. Something in this book, Ronk, just strikes you. You relate with this book. It's like the first book that you've ever actually like been into before in your life. And it just makes sense in your mind for the first time Ever. Uh, the, Do you relate this information the, to Felix? Yeah. The book. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what, what, what about the book? It has something to do with what's been going on here. Oh, yeah? Explain oh, yeah. to me in proper details exactly how it is affecting us. Oh. Well, uh, you see, the armor, the chitlins, the mage hunters would break off just to go <laughs> hunting. Uh, I don't know. I just know this has nothing to do with, with what's going on. 100 to a 20. Thank you, Big Jam. Fucking cheers, dog. Thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> But now I know there's something going on here, Felix. Really? Something fishy. Well, that. Hmm. Really? Yeah. It's a book. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, Ronk, it's a book. <laughs> I get that. All right. All right. He kind of relays a little bit of the information to you guys, which I can repeat at any point if you want me to. But first, um, Felix, your book tells you about a student that used to practice bizarre magic here on campus while attending their uh, time here at Strongheart University. And during Quinthorn, the person who wrote this book, during their administrative year 200 years ago, this student used magic to siphon energy and life from creatures. The tome describes the strange magic's lingering aura, which is identical as it described to some of the auras and oils that you have recently observed. This student was censored repeatedly for breaking the university's bylaws and was expelled and ran before he could be arrested. The tome also states that the student left and never returned to campus. The name of the student, though, is blacked out and ill edible in all mentions. But he did leave behind a poem right here in this book. The road goes ever on and on out from the door where it begun. Now far ahead the road is gone. Let others follow it who cares can. Let them a journey new begin. But I at last with weary feet will turn towards the lighted inn, my evening rest and sleep to meet. Nice. Can we get some snap emotes in chat, y'all? If you're a subscriber, you got snap emotes. Hell yeah. The is the king. <laughs> Be a turn. Yeah, eh, it's not. All right. You read both of these books. Um, additionally, yes, Mage Hunters, you learn all about those. Um, and you guys kind of think that maybe this is relevant to your occasion. Now, both of you, after these 10 minutes, stand up from the table and begin searching the bookcases once again. But now you search together. And I'd like both of you to roll me a collaborative perception roll as you guys search. The bookcases. Ooh. Oh, no. Cherry, Cherry, you're supposed to be helping us. Why? Are she's you she's just so excited play? to be down here. She didn't know she was uh, supposed to help you. She's just flabbergasted. She's excited okay. to be reading all these books. Well, that's okay. With the combined score of six. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jesus, and right, Jesus, man. Um, uh, also, this would be an investigation check at this point. No longer perception. This is investigation. Do you have bonuses give to this? A dice. Who yeah, gets to give a dice? Three. Rum Tom? Uh, nice. I do. I have a plus five, so my neck is actually a nine. Who gets to give a dice, Rum Tom? Who gets it, Rum Tom? Come on, Rum Tom. Who gets it? Come on. Who gets it? Come on. Who gets it? Oh, Ronk. Sweet. Reroll Ronk. All right. That's One, a two. now. Sweet. Oh, I have 11 now. You guys both searching together, hands on hands, every single book together, searching, looking through every single one of them. Like, Felix, you're looking at like a middle shelf, and Ronk, you're a little bit taller. You're looking at the top shelf. And eventually, one of you comes across what you kind of 
remember as could be the title of the book. Will you read that back to me? Let's see. An interpretive scripture... Or no, an interpretive sketch... Wheel or woe. There you go. As you say it out loud, your hand touches the book. The shelf right underneath the book, right above your head, Felix, the shelf begins to light up. And both of you recognize this bit on this shelf because both of you just passed your exam on glyphs of warding, that this is a glyph of warding on this shelf itself to stop and entrap people from reading this book. Both of you roll me a dexterity save to jump out of the way of this glyph of warding, and both of you will get advantage because you both passed your previous exams. Oh, thank God. Uh, right. so you said acrobatics? Uh, it's just a dex save. Oh, just a dex save? That's a yeah. 16. Oh, never mind, that's a 19. As both of you jump out of the way, you will both take half of 3d6 force damage. Because you succeeded. That is 6 plus one more. That is 11. You both take 5 force damage as you're pushed back away. And you hit the bookshelf behind you. And the bookshelf doesn't tip as you hit it because it is bolted to the ground. So you just hit it real hard. A couple of the books kind of shamble. Both of you stand back up to see that this book is almost glowing in aura. You both approach the book and you hear Cherry behind you going, Ooh, what is that? And when we return in 10 minutes, everybody, we're going to see what the fuck this book is. But before we go, yeah, I want both of y'all to just do the wildest, craziest pose you can imagine. And I want to see what our community can come up with um, pose wise. I want you to just do whatever you think is fucking crazy. Creative time for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody, screenshot it. Screenshot it. Come on. Screenshot it, everybody. Yeah. Whee! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Drunks and Dragons. I'm your lovely Dungeon Master and host, Dungeon Master Turkey. And I'm joined here with Fishy and Connor, two lovely, amazing players and role players and Grouch Couch crew members. That's right, this is the full costume comedy chat involved. Dungeons and Dragons show, the only one of its kind and it's right here on Twitch. It's a goddamn shit show, everybody. It's fucked up. It's a goddamn shit show, okay? Before we get into the show's tradition around here, to cheers together. I'm drinking Rolling Cock. It is a shitty beer because I'm broke and it's what's left over from Wasteland. So here I am doing that. Yeah, thank you all so much for joining us and being awesome. And thank you, Indigo Chameleon, for the raid while we were on break. Appreciate you. That's right. Connor's drinking reds. Fishy's drinking monsters. We're here. We're good to go. And guess what? Because Felix did the recap last time, Ronk gets to do it this time. To help inform the oh, folks that are just joining us what the fuck is going on currently. Hell yeah. Well... <laughs> Uh. Oh my god. <laughs> Ronk, what's Can't going on? Can't even remember what uh what's uh transpired. Hold on. Maybe this will help. Okay. We started out as say a skate park doing some skatey things. Then we went to talk to Dr. Woodslobber about uh, freeing Eddie from his curse of being attached to the cart, only being sentient when we touched the cart. So he gave us some information about a library. It's very secret. He gave us two tickets to go to that library. Magical tickets. That Felix decided to forge one, and luckily it worked. Uh, we also invited Felix's new boo thing, which I guess is Cherry, so... You know, she's down there with us, too. And uh, we're just searching for these gosh darn books, and I think we just found it. Yeah, it was, uh, hey, it was called... Um, well, hold on. Let me get my notes again. Uh, was, uh, an interpretive sketch. Wheel or woe? 
and then a nice drawing of myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so you two just got fucked up by a glyph of warding as you got pushed back up against the wall. The book in front of you glows in all different kinds of strange colors. Cherry approaches you two as you stand back up a few feet from this book on the bookshelf. The map states... Map. That is where you stand. Um, tonight, uh, the head of Rosalie was being played by Cherry. Cherry kind of approaches from over here. She's like, what the heck? What's going on? What do you guys do? You got an eight, Debbie. That's a fail. You are not stealthy in your lurk leave. But well, cheers, Debbie. Thank you for the lurk. We we promote lurks around here, right? Cheers, Debbie. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Now, if I remember back from when we were doing our glyphs training classes, as long as you break the circle of the glyph circle, and you know, like break it somehow without really like touching it, then we should be able to deactivate the glyph. Is that how it works? Oh shit, alright, because right, I'm learning something too. I thought it was just a one time I, I, use kind of thing. Is it? I I, I, yeah. was, I don't know. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would make sense if you break the glyph circle, then the glyph wouldn't sure. work anymore. Right. Shut up, Google! Shut up, Google! More. We didn't ask you, Google! Damn it, Google! Shut the we fuck up! We have just been raided. We have just been raided. We have just been raided. I wonder who it's from. <laughs> Well, from passive perception, quick! Everybody from the raid on passive perception, use exclamation point 1d20 in chat. Let's see what you roll. Also, thank you guys so much for the raid, passive perception. You guys, make sure to check them out. They're a big old part of our wonderful, amazing TTRPG and D&D community right here on Twitch, all right? And our community must grow together! Also, hey, passive perception folks, if I haven't already hit you up about it, we're doing a Halloween special on Sunday the 30th. And if you want to be involved with the collaboration on that, please let me know. I know obviously you stream on Sundays, but if you're not doing anything big that day, please let me know, because we'd love to have you. Fuck yeah. Cheers. All right, what do you do, Felix? Uh, can I use... Ray, I messaged you already, Ray. I know that I fucking messaged you too. I know I did. I know I did. All right, continue, Felix. Sorry. Can I use Ray of Frost on the, like, glyph circle at, like, a low volume so it, like, just breaks the circle? Sure. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Ray of Frost. This Ray of Frost is a ranged attack, correct? Yes. Roll it for me. I got a 25. Oh no. Cool, trash can. Cool. I forgot you could do that with actual dice. Yeah. Wild magic with dice. Yep. Okay, well, your Ray of Frost breaks the seal. And some of the light and the color kind of fades away from the shelf. The book continues to glow, a slight glow. Yeah, let me know, Ray. Take a step back and just like look at Ronk. Go on. I'm not fucking touching it. Not even you. You grab it. I ain't fucking touching it. Okay. I'll grab the book. All right. You reach out and grab the book. It glows in your hands as you grab it, Ronk. This piece of literature is foreign to you. You don't know books very well. But as you grab that book, a groan. That's a weird time to stop that sentence. A groan <laughs> echoes throughout this quiet room. Like metal grinding upon metal. You spot movement to your left from the largest astrolobe along the north wall. As the device's overlapping copper rings become lashing barbed tentacles. And it comes off of the wall. An astrolobe is kind of like a circle. It kind of like, it's like an astrology thing. It kind of maps the time of the year and where the stars are and shit like that. So its gears are kind of like moving. It doesn't have a face. But on the sides of it, its tentacles lash out. 
I need both of you to roll me initiative. Well, shit. That's right. And uh, Trash Can never said who gets the wild magic. You gotta let us know, Trash Can. Who is it? Who is it? Yeah, it's almost like you're on a fucking show. I know. Who the heck? Not is a really it? good show, though. Obviously, he doesn't know how the commands work. Yeah. I'm gonna get up the music here for the battle. Um, additionally, Felix gets the wild magic. So, um, after I write down your initiative, I'm gonna need you to roll me that one d hundred because you're starting initiative roll with your wild magic. Yes. Okay, so that is a one for Cherry and a thirteen for the thing. So, Bronk. Yes, Felix. Thing. Cherry. Nice. Got it. Go on ahead, buddy. Roll me that 1d100. Is that a 60? I think it's just it's, 60. Yeah, that's a 60. Oh, got an ad here. All right. I just piggybacked it onto his cantrip. Oh, interesting. Oh, his frost cantrip. I get what you're doing. Nice. All right, 60. You become invisible for one minute. Yeah. Got that opacity filter? Do me like 70%. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you attack, it removes your invisibility. All right. Initiative is starting. Before it does, we're going to take a look at the battle map. We're already here. Yes. Now, uh, it's somewhere in here. I'm going to put it right here over the couches. This! <gasps> Too much, yeah, too much. Yes, invisible man, ninja mode, activated. Guess what, Ronk, like you're like first. This I'm is the first. Map. Yes. What do you do? I'm gonna... Gonna cast Guiding Bolt at Big the summon. third level. Grimishka. The fuck is a Grimishka? Also, what are the rules on Big Summon? It's been too fucking long. Sorry. Oh, wait one second. Ronk? A one-eighth creature? I think so. Should be, right? That's what it says. Yeah. The fuck is a Grimishka? A Grimishka is a tiny monstrosity. <laughs> okay. A Grimishka enters the battle. Um... I'm gonna show y'all a picture of what the fuck. Are we here? No, we gotta go here. It's gonna go on the thing's turn. There's a Grimish guy. It looks like this right here. Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's a tiny little rat thing. All right, certifiable. It has a fun little reaction. All right, I'm gonna read it a little bit. Okay, Ronk. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at the third level. Fuck yeah. Guiding Bolt. First level. Plus D6. Ranged attack. Roll that shit, huh? Let me get up the stat sheet for this thing. Does me being invisible make me stealth? Uh, yeah. I think so. Okay, cool. Yeah. The 21. Okay. What is that, like, seven? Let me check its AC. Edgy ass goblin rat. You got it. A 21 hits. Oh, your okay. damage, Ronk. Also, Here I would like you to damage. act out act out this spell. How do you cast your magic? You know, I'm just not feeling too particularly bothered today. So I'm just uh, going to point my staff at him. Say, burn! Going to burn real good. Got burn. him full. I never realized he had a dream catcher on his staff. Do you have, you have nice dream problems, catcher. Ron? It's a soul catcher. Soul oh, catcher. okay. That's fucking dark, dude. 
<laughs> yeah, it is. All right, this music fucking. Here comes stuck. that damage. Here comes that damage. Give it to us. That's a lot of twos. Holy fuck! <laughs> Sad cheers, everybody. Sad cheers. That's a fourth date. All right. God, it's awful. You lash out and swing your staff around and shoot a bolt right out of your thing at it. And it goes, and its tentacles kind of flop a little bit. But then it continues moving towards you. Felix, it's your go. Unless you want to move, Rock, do you want to move? Movement? I'd like to move back, uh, back further into the hallway next to uh, Cherry. I'll let you move a disadvantage since you're moving through your friends. But do you want to move, I mean, at half movement, do you want to move past her or here? Uh, right, yeah, right there's fine. Okay. Felix. Go ahead and leave it on the screen. No, go back to that one because okay. I want to move first. But uh, where's the edgy-ass goblin rat? Oh, yeah, we need a star for that. Edgy-ass goblin rat is here. It came out from underneath the coffee table. All right. Uh, in my uh, invisibleness, I'll, I'm gonna sneak towards it, okay. and then uh, can I? Is it is it possible Five, for me to get 10, behind 15, it? Fifteen, twenty. You know, I hop over the couch, get on the coffee table. But I'm gonna need you to roll yeah. in the stealth if you're gonna do that. No problem. That's uh, that's All a right. twenty-four. All right, you're hidden. All right, and then I want to stab down at the edgy ass of the goblin rat with my short sword. Okay. Is it your level up sword? We did that in twenty. Oh, that rolled twenty. Oh, 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 oh baby. Oh shit, dude. Right. It's yeah. Yeah. Not a twenty that actually matters. Cheers. Fuck yeah, everybody. Finally. Give Fuck yeah. Dice. Can we get some natty twenties in chat? So. Oh. I didn't think so. Certifiable's yeah. mad. Because you're fighting his yeah. little thing. Um, but that's 18. an 18. Yeah. Natural 20! Yeah, yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Odie. Cheers. Um, is this with your level up sword? Yes. That would have been great because so. you needed a level. You needed a 20 with that fucker. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So that's, that's a little upsetting, but it is what it is. All right, an 18 hits. Uh, that's for the sword damage, and then sneak damage. The plus four is going to be 16 sneak damage. Okay. What is its reaction? Because you definitely kill it. Um, immediately after a creature within 30 feet of the Grimishka casts a spell, the Grimishka can spontaneously react to the magic. Roll a d6 to determine the effect. The Grimishka irradiates magical energy, the Grimishka surges with magical energy, or the Grimishka explodes and dies. And one swarm of Grimishkas instantly appears in the space where this Grimishka died. This is really fucking cool, Certifiable. What the fuck? That's why he um, did it. That's why he wanted can me you, to fail. And wait I know. Fail. Um, Certifiable, can you please find the stat sheet for this shit and put it in TTRPGs in the Discord? Because it's fucking badass. Yeah, but I definitely do not think he was within 30 feet of it. Especially because Felix just moved 25 um, to get behind it. Well, these squares aren't actually, I'm just kind of doing it by mouse and y'all can't really see my mouse. Um, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Ronk? Yeah. You would have, you would have done the thing. So I'm going to roll just because it's fucking badass certifiable. I'm going to roll. That is a five. The Grimishka explodes and dies. And one swarm of Grimishkas instantly appears in the space where this Grimishka died. The swarm uses the Grimishka's initiative. Um, swarm of cranium rats. So this is what you actually did your damage to. The swarm is already so like killed a, a cranium of rats. Is that yeah. A, if how much damage did you rat? do? I did uh, uh, 14, 16, 14 okay. or 16. So 15, you didn't 16. kill. The swarm of cranium rat. Oh fuck! Um, but here's what they look like. Just 
so everybody could display. Display, where are we? Kind of what they look like. It's a bunch of little little rats with their brains showing. Yeah. Swarm of Grimish Ghosts. Yeah, but then it says it says swarm of rats underneath it. Whenever you go to the go to the stat sheet. Hold on. Hold on. I wanna double check. I wanna double check. Um, when a creature, yeah, when it explodes, like a swarm of rats, a swarm of Grimishkas have a slew of damage resistance. It. Okay, so it's using that as an example. I'm reading this, everybody. If you want to check it out for yourselves, hopefully certifiable, we'll drop it into the TTRPG section in the Discord. The swarm of Grimishkas. Okay, no, it's down here. I see it. I see it. It's at the bottom. All right. How much damage did you do? Uh, 16. 16. Okay, nice. Alright, moving on. After you attack, you are no longer invisible. The swarm of Grimishkas, after you just dealt a bunch of damage to all of them, <laughs> turn around and use their bites action on you. It has a plus four to hit. They basically move into your space, which I'll update on the map, um, and they have a plus four to hit. I posted it. Thank you, Trash Can. Appreciate you, bro. That's a seven. That's an 11. Does an 11 hit you? That does not hit. Okay. Additionally, the swarm can occupy another creature's space and vice versa, and the swarm can move through any opening large enough for a tiny Grimishka. Nice. So they're basically standing in your space, but... They did not deal any damage to you. Now, to the battle map. You got lucky, certifiable. You got fucking lucky. All right. They're like on top of you. Everybody remember that. Okay, this thing is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. What is this movement speed? 30 feet inside of the bookshelves with the both of you. It has multi-attack. It is going to use its tail attack. So let's whip around one of its things. Try and hit you, Ronk. There's a plus seven to hit. That's a 14. Does it hit you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You take 2d6 plus four bludgeoning damage. That is eight damage. It also uses its tentacles to whip around and hit Cherry right over you. Because it's attacking Cherry through you, it's going to be using it at disadvantage. So that is a 9 plus 7, which is 16. Or a 4 plus 7, which is an 11. And does an 11 hit her? It does. An 11 totally hits her. God damn Gee. weak ass. Fairy. is taking 4d8 plus 4 damage. 8. 2, that's 10. Plus 2. 6. Oh, I got a minus, which means that it's going to miss. Unless someone in chat wants to help me, that's 16, 17. That's 21 damage she's going to take. Damn it, Rum Tom. You've gotten me this time, you son of bitch. Cheers. You mother bitch. Give a dice. Uh, with the reroll. Thank you, trash can. That is a 10 plus 7, 17. Or a natural 20. So that means it's a 15, which means it still hits. She takes 16 damage. Now it is her turn. Um, I would like you guys to be able to pick what she does. You brought her along. You kind of know what she can do. I want you to be yelling at her through the library on how you want her to attack. Like you're fucking yelling at her at. Yeah. She are you, Felix? can do magical flare. She can also do mage hand, press and detect cool. magic. Three. 20. DM20, get biddies to get biddies yeah. too. Cheers, Otis. Cheers. Um, 
I she's feel like she thing. would try to hide and stuff. I don't think oh. she would try to use magic inside of a, a ancient library. Yeah. Because she's like a scholar student. Yeah. So I guess I'm more of like a disengage and run and hide type of deal. Okay. Like exactly she would run back and then start running all the way down that whole like book aisle, like downwards. Okay. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. There she goes. Now we're at the top of initiative. Ronk, what do you do? Well, it's a good thing uh, anybody else around me has fled. I got something for that. I'm going to cast Thunder Wave at the third level. Ooh. A wave of thunderous force sweeps out from you. Each creature in a 15-foot cube originating from you must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes, in this case, 4d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from you. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much and isn't pushed. Right. We're doing a con save. This thing's constitution. It has a plus two. Here we go. That is a 91. It fails. Oh, yeah. Roll me your damage. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Peace. Three, Do a seven, lot better with that damage. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen. It's pushed back away from you as you let out this thundering roar. <laughs> and you push it back. How many feet was it? Ten feet. Ten feet. Five. Ten. Pushed back away from you. <laughs> as its tentacles wiggle. <laughs> Some of the books, the pages, go flying in the air from the thunderous roar. Does this end your turn? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Felix, what do? Uh, with that swarm of evil rat-like mice things. Yeah. Uh, ha ha ha. You tiny, puny rodents. You have no match for me. And I'm going to cast infestation and have these mice be eaten alive by mites and fleas uh you cause a cloud of mites and fleas and other parasites to appear momentarily on one creature you can see within range which are the guys below me the target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 2d6 uh poison damage and then flee all right and they say then it's gonna run. All right, so con save. Here we go. It's gotta be the sixteen. It's got plus zero. Magic stone. Cherry finds three stones on a shelf. Each has a range of sixty feet and one d six plus chats. Chats modifier. Magic stone. What do the stones do? Chat doesn't have a spell casting modifier. That's Does not it? how. Wait. Should chat have a spell casting modifier? Did chat have his own character sheet? Yeah. Wait, wait. We're going to have to talk about this later at in street. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. This is a fantastic idea. There you go. There's now a community challenge for chat. If you put in enough experience points, you can all get plus two to all of your chat rolls. I think chat needs its own fucking character sheet. All right. Um, who knows for how long? Could be for the rest of the season. We don't know. All right. Con save, plus zero. That is a one again. What the fuck? All right, roll me your damage, Felix. That's uh, 
That's four poison damage. Okay. And they will flee in the direction of... Shit. Ooh, they're looking pretty fucked up. Uh, they flee in the direction of Weast. Weast. Sounds good. Ten feet? Yeah. Sounds good. All right. About five feet, actually. Oh. All right. Limited spell immunity? The swarm automatically succeeds on saving throws against spells of third level or lower, and the attack rolls of such spells always miss it. All right, what the fuck are you trying to do here, certifiable? All right? All right? You son of a bitch. We're on a time limit. <laughs> Can't be fighting these fucking swarm bullshits for five hours. Fuck off, moving on. All right. T is what? The thing. It's the thing's fucking turn. We're moving on. Don't forget the redirect. What? Spell redirection Wait, in response so to a spell. One of these things, and then attack we roll, it and it missing the swarm. swarm of them. The swarm causes that spell to hit another creature of its choice within 30 feet that it can see. All right, I'm gonna have to put a rule on no more homebrew monsters. All right, I ain't taking homebrew fucking bullshit. Y'all better stop it. Okay, this is cool as fuck. It's very fucking cool. It's super fucking dope. All right, but we're moving on promptly because there's still some shit that I want to do and I have my own creature that I want these guys to fight, okay? Y'all remember that, all right? It's from Van Ranger's Guide. Well, why does it say homebrew on fucking D&D Beyond? It literally says homebrew. It says terrify your characters with this fucking... What you talking about? I'm moving right along here. It's a post someone made. Yeah, what the fuck? <sighs> Don't you make me get all crazy turkey on you, because I'll do it. I don't know what that means. All right, moving on. I've seen it before. It's scary. Yes, but we only have two players as well. Exactly. And we have so much other shit that I still want to do tonight. All right. So very cool fucking monster, but I'm skipping that stuff. Right. We did the first thing. Uh, the problem is nerds trolling nerds. Exactly. So is this uh, big DM nerd? Um, what I'm going to say is fuck you. All right, moving on. Multi-attack. The thing is going to move towards Felix this time. Standing on the coffee table. It sees you. Hello? And it uses its tentacles to attack you. It has a plus seven to hit. Oh, God damn. Yeah. Here we go. 17. That is a 24. Certified yeah. will said sorry. Nah, dude, no worries. Don't be sorry. I always like creativity and stuff, but sometimes I gotta keep things moving. And I'm sure you understand. A 24 hits you, which means you will be taking 4 D8 plus 4 slashing damage. God damn. Yes? Alright, here we go. Whoa, that was a 5 and I moved it to a 2. We'll keep it as a 2. It's fine. That's another two, that's four. That's a six, that's 10. That's a three, you take 17 damage. Yes. Yeah. Now, it uses its tail attack to hit you again. Plus seven to hit. 14, does that hit you? Um, I am going to cast a spell at a first level spell slot. Silvery barbs. You magically distract the triggering creature and turn it momentarily uncertain to encouragement for another creature. Uh, tur a triggering creature must reroll a d20 and use the lower. Right. So seven or a seven. <sighs> ah! Uh, Rumtown said, I mean, we definitely need a modifier to hit mobs with us doing stuff like Eldritch Blast, but gotta almost roll 18 or higher to hit things, it seems. True. Haven't fought many swarms in 5e. I know in older editioning, they could only hurt by AoE. True. True. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know. Right, you take more damage, you nerd. 
Um, tentacles are 2d6 plus 4. Are you going to live? That is 4 plus 4, 8 damage. I'm still alive. I told you we're going to need that healing potion. I know, That's why we went to the store. Yes. All right, it's Cherry's turn. What does she do? Keep running. I uh, didn't certifiable leave some like weird glowing lantern orbs. Oh yeah, not Odie did that. Didn't Odie do that? Yeah. Uh, Odie. Magic stone. Three stones on a shelf. Each has a range of sixty feet, and one d six plus chat spellcasting modifier. Yeah, she's gonna she's gonna throw one of those at the big tentacly monster. All right. A lot of condition immunities and resistance. Okay, someone use exclamation point one d twenty in chat. Go. You're rolling for Cherry. Cherry gets Dex plus, which is plus one. Go. That's a 13. That is a 14. Unless chat gets a plus two. Which I don't know. It ain't completed yet. Can chat do that? Yeah. A 14 misses. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, sure. A 14 misses. She throws one of these orbs. Uh, as long as that isn't the person who plus rolled the two. dice. Yeah. Plus two. Plus two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Certifiable Nikki and Odie. Um, she hits with this orb. Now, what does this orb do? 1d6 plus, plus chat modifier. Uh, yeah. Okay. Which they don't have yet. Which we've never really done community challenges before. I don't even... Fishy, can you see what that looks like? Uh, one second. Do community challenges, so chat builds their own little character sheet. Say the fuck what? That was an amazing idea that Odie just happened to fucking put into Turkey's brain by fucking accident. Uh, I cannot from from my side. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Because it would just be in like the experience points bubbles, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it says not started. Oh, I gotta start the challenge. All right, now it's started. I like that shit when I DM because it makes my brain go brrrr, but I am also the earliest derailed DM ever. Haha, <laughs> that's true, huh? You know, I would love to do that. Maybe one night we'll do a 24 hour stream and it'll be fucking chaos, but we'll fucking see what happens. All right, moving on. Three damage. Now, putting it at 30. Ooh. Wrong. What do you do? Well, I think I'm going to hit it with Guiding Bolt again. Yeah? You positive? Uh, yeah. Positive. Okay. okay. This one's going to be at the second level. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's a hit, that's son. Nice. 25. Do you want to show us how you do it? And then roll your damage? Do it, like, over the shoulder. Bang. A bang. All right. Roll me your damage. Jesus. Uh, 20. Later. Jesus. All right. The clockwork thing gets hit by your guiding bolt. Bang. As you look over at Cherry and wink. I'm assuming you wink. I feel like you should wink. The bolt goes soaring right across where Felix is standing and hits this clockwork thing. And it kind of like singes with this physical energy. And then the tentacles explode into a bloody mess, getting all over Felix. Uh, not again. Yes. The rat swarm still on the ground. Felix, it's your go. And now that we know some of the rules of this thing, I'm taking all the rules on this swarm. Keep that in mind. What do you do? Alright. I'm in. I've never really ever fought swarms in 5e either. Do I have to do AoE damage? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um... No, I don't think so. 
don't know. I'm just going to j- jump from, from leaping off the table. I'm going to jump and slash down on the swarm with my short sword. Oh, wait a minute. That's a far leap. You better roll me acrobatics. What is that? Five feet? Yeah. Acrobatics. Uh, 23. 23. And then to hit. Uh, 18. 18. That hits. And then fall damage. 8. Swarm be swarm. 8 damage. So, as everyone has stated in chat, it has damages, resistances to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. So it only takes half of that damage. But, with your 4, it brings it up. The 24. Killing the swarm of Grimishkas. Although, Odie did cast Infestation on the Swarm. Again. But, it is dead. Would you like to continue this spell, Odie, or would you like to refund yourself? Like a big old rat king. Knew it was something like that. Yeah. Physical still works. It's just, yeah, you got it, you got it. Nope. Okay. Refunding. Word. Alright. Battle has ended. Although it was intense... It was chaotic. There was other monsters included. Shit was getting wild. You guys now stand in this library. Ronk still holding this book. You guys have taken some damage. What do you guys do? What's up? What's up, read the book. You want to read it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cherry has two super cool stones, too. Yes, and she gets to keep them, huh? Cherry is still alive, although barely. All right. As you try to open the book, it seems to stay shut, but you try to pull on it real hard. Roll me a strength save, Ronk. Nice. Natural 20. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, we are at 8788 of 10,000. Hey, look at that. And y'all got about an hour to finish it. Natural 20! No! No! Yes. Now, to have the book, you open it up. Ronk, after ripping it open. And it kind of like color flutters out of it as you open it. It still continues to glow, the pages fluttering back and forth. It seems to be a little chaotic. As the pages continue flurrying, you try to stop the pages from moving, and they continue moving underneath your hands, and it's super hard to read, and you're like, what the heck? And the pages that you do kind of like get to look at as they're fluttering back and forth are blank. Hmm. Well, I don't know what to do about that. Mm. Community challenge complete! All right, uh, we need to write it down. I need to start up a chat character sheet. Um, I guess each week we're going to do things. What's up, Jer? Um, we're going to do a thing. Um, I'm going to write it down. Y'all now have plus two. Should I say all chat rolls? All right, chat. I want you to do yourselves a favor. Use the name and thing command and pick one thing that you want plus twos to, whether that be spell attack damage dexterity, strength saves, whatever it is, I want you to use the name of thing command. We're going to put it to a poll. All right, you're going to get plus two to one thing on your chat character sheet. This is evolving as we're working, okay? I want you all to use the name of thing command and pick one thing that you want plus twos to. All right, spell attack. All right, that's good. Good. Survival. Now, you guys stand in here. Cherry kind of waddles back over and she's like, Jesus, what was that? Can we, can we leave? Yeah, we got what we were looking for. Unless, uh, Felix, you want to look at anything else? Uh, I want to look at the Tentacly Monster. And, uh... Kind of check, would you say, to be to, like, kind of dissect that thing and try to understand to, like, it a little bit. To investigate it? Yeah, kind of. I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, like, to investigate a creature, I don't know. What kind of check do you think that would be? I have no idea. Um... <laughs> But I'm going to investigate maybe. this creature, <laughs> and I got a nine. <laughs> you know, uh, you're nine, you fail. You look at the thing, it seems, ah, uh, nature? Yeah. 
So just getting here, what are they fighting? Well, they just finished. They were currently fighting a thing, a piece of... Uh, a trophy that came alive and started attacking them, per to say, and a monster that certifiable Give summoned. The dice. And the monster that certifiable summoned was actually really fucking cool. And if you want to check out the stats for that, That's check it out cool. in the Discord underneath TTRPGs. We kind of fub the stats a little bit for tonight, but it's very, very fucking cool. Very cool. 19! Investigating! As you investigate this thing, you reveal the presence of chipped chitlin embedded in claw wounds on this creature. As you notice it, you realize that it's the same material found near Wiltroot Hall and inside of the Chimera. You can also conclude that maybe either this student or the mage hunters that work for him subdued this creature before forcing it to ambush you after touching the book. Oh, wow. So the, 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 the armor, the armor shards are inside the wounds of the, uh, of the animal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's up, Playmat? Yeah. What's up, dude? Thank you for joining Not us. Quick. Mm-hmm. So, what do Cheers. Yeah, hey, fucking cheers. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, fucking cheers. I want to scrape out some of the armor shards out of the claw wounds. Nice. Put it in a satchel. And then, um... And then I want to walk up to Cherry. And, uh... I'm not, I'm not doing too good, by the way. I only had, uh... Like, I am fucked up. I only have four HP left out of thirty-seven. Jesus. And I'm all like bloody and coughing up blood, and I'm. <coughs> so, baby, how'd you like the libraries? <coughs> Let me go back to the big river. Uh, she's like, well, I. It was more dangerous than I thought, but I did learn some things about some history of the school. Did you know there was some student that used to be here that was like draining life from other students how crazy is that what that's so crazy isn't it crazy uh, well yeah. i mean you know how it is with the breakfast club like anywhere we go we're just bound to find adventure and stuff um but uh how about we go back upstairs and then uh maybe next time we just have a nice like uh dinner you know nothing too serious Okay. So, um, since you brought her with you and uh, specifically <laughs> sought her out to bring you with her, I'll allow you to gain one more relationship okay. point with Cherry. Um, yeah. Okay. But she says, um, if this is your idea of a date in a library, it kind of sucks. So, yeah, maybe you can make it up to me. You're buying. It, uh, that's, that's fine. Um, that's weird. You were so excited to come down here and tell, you know, some well, adventures. Well, yeah, shit until we got happened. attacked by a swarm of rats and a floating astrological thing. To be honest, I really don't seek these things out. They just kind of find me. Well. Yeah, you're okay. doing great, Cupcake. Thanks. I was talking about her, but. Oh. It was like, thanks. My bad. You guys wander back up the stairs. Um, and as you get on the other side, you can see there's a switch that you just push and it lets you get back through. So there's no need to put your tickets back in. You need to keep those as like souvenirs. But now at this point, the magical imbuing on those tickets has faded away, being that your hour has totally passed of your free hour here. You guys then, I'm assuming, head back to Professor Woodslobber to give him the book. Or do you keep it for yourselves? Yeah. Do you want to uh, study it I yourselves? You have what you came for. The choice is um, yours. Ronk, you decide on what you want to do with the book. It's, uh, you want to get Eddie? I'm going to walk Cherry back home uh, to wherever she sleeps. And then I'm probably going to go to sleep. I don't feel good. I think I broke a rib. Okay. What I... Would I be able to make some kind of 
Arcana check on the book to see if I know of a way to make it stop flipping pages when I open it. Booty, you, no, that was our only chance to get viewers and followers. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? So, um, as you're outside, before you, Felix, and uh, Cherry, before you fuck off, you can see that uh, Eddie is there in the cart, ready to deliver you guys on wherever you want to go. You're more than welcome to just walk. But, Ronk, yes, you can make an Arcana check on the book to maybe see a little bit more about it, if you would like. Um, please go on ahead and do so. And, uh, Felix, if you want to leave Ronk to the last of this mission God by himself, you're also free to do so. That's a 10. Yeah, you don't learn much about the book. You know what you already know. Yeah, I'm not feeling so good. I just want to walk Terry home and then go take a cat nap and uh, maybe a couple long rests and try to heal up some of these wounds. Okay. That's a right. long poetry. So we're leaving it to Ronk. Give you, a dice. Uh, hey, you got a plus two and a give a dice. Chad is, is really interested in this fucking magical book. It's been a while since we had one of those. Oh, yeah. That's oh, 20, yeah. Uh, 23. Oh, yeah. From studying this book, you can tell that it has some kind of seal on it. Some kind of ward. Stopping a normal person from just being able to read it without doing something to reveal its words and to stop it from attacking or not attacking but um, flailing its pages every it's got some kind of magical properties on it stopping you from being able to read it but it is indeed a book it is a book yes yeah yeah can I try to rub its spine real quick all right, you rub the spine of the book. Perfect. Of course it purrs in your hands. You know that it does. You know what it is. And the book's pages begin stop flipping and they slowly settle. And you keep rubbing it. The book, the book totally comes and it's then it relaxes and it's very chill. It just wants a sandwich now. So the book's pages settle. I know you rolled the again. sandwich. <laughs> and the pages are revealed to you. It's oh, all nice. different kinds of spells and magic and story and all different kinds of things. Is there something specific you're looking for in this book? I'm looking for uh, a way to lift a, a curse of... Would it be binding? To Maybe. A cart? Or... Maybe. I'm going to start researching the book. To figure okay. out if there's a way I can help Eddie. All right. Well, being that you are who you are, I would like you to roll me a wisdom save to see how well you perform in this act. Because it seems to me Ronk doesn't do a lot of reading. Uh, that's a 12. Oh, and I'm sorry, not a save, but a check. A check. Um, My mouth always just says save. That is a 12. All right, it takes you a while. You're standing there next to the cart with Eddie. He's eating the grass. You're standing there by yourselves just reading this thing. And I mean, hours go by. You like sit down on a rock. You're like reading this thing. Everyone has fucked off and gone home. The sun begins to set. And then eventually you find on like page 87, a thing, a description of how this student, whose name you still don't know, put a curse on the donkey. And the way to remove said curse is to kiss said donkey. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna kiss the donkey. Anybody else feel like this is a ruse for Turkey to be able to get to kiss Connor? Like three years of Crouch Couch has been leading up to just this moment. I'm just gonna lift uh, Donkey's head up from the grass. And, Hello. Uh, start. What are you doing? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Why are you halting right. me like this? Wrong. This is, what are you uh, doing? This is gonna help. 
Right? Uh, how? Gonna help. How is this gonna help me? It's gonna lift your curse. How? What? Yeah. What you're is, gonna what turn you... back into a prince again. I mean, you're what gonna are you be doing? free. What are you doing to me? Just stay still. Don't think about it. Close your eyes. Pretend okay. I'm a dragon. What? I can't close my eyes. The snap filter won't let me. <laughs> well, then I guess you have to watch. I have to watch. <laughs> okay. Lay it on me. Ah. Oh, Jesus. Ah. And I, I really wanted to, like, do a thing. And then in a flash, he turns into a heavy metal guitar playing Eddie guy, standing on top of the carriage playing Master of Puppets. We're not doing that, um, because his name's Eddie, you know, strange. Anyways, moving on. Decapitation! It seems that the reins around Eddie's shoulders slowly fall down as if they were placed there magically. As if this curse was put upon him to be someone's specific steed in a time of need. The reins fall off, and then Eddie starts running around in circles, clopping around like a happy little donkey. Super happy, running in circles. Uh... Oh my goodness, Ronk, you did it! I'm free! I'm free! I'm not a singing dunk. Oh my goodness! How can I ever repay you? You can join our mage team. Oh, you bet. I don't know how good I'll be, but I'll come, I'll play, I'll do whatever you want. I'm just so happy to be free of the curse of that dang chariot. Promise me, Ronk, I will never have to taxi anyone around ever again. I promise you. Okay, I'm gonna hold you to that. Ah. Well, I guess I need a place to sleep now. Where are you crashing? Uh, we're in a treehouse. You wanna come? Oh, I don't do well with stairs, but, uh, I'll come. I can, uh, haul you up with some, uh, like a bucket, a rope or something. I'll make a little elevator system for you. All right. That sounds fun. Okay. Don't they usually power the <sighs> elevators in medieval First, time with donkeys? If you, oh, I will not do that. <laughs> I, you promised. You promised oh, me. No, you're not doing that. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. Switch bullies and ropes. Q, You'll bring me back to your place and let me stay there. I promise you that in the morning, I'm making waffles. Oh, good. I was hoping. Say. That's right. Um, okay. So, I mean, like, this fairly kind of ends the episode tonight. Felix, if you would like to describe the walking home of you and Cherry, please feel free to do so. How does that go? Um... Well, I'm limping and uh, I'm kind of wheezing because I have a broken rib. So, yeah. <coughs> so, uh, uh, Cherry, like, uh, what what part of Intoxica are you from? And she's like, uh, I'm from Oakheart. Oh, Oakheart? Yeah, I've been to Oakheart. I've seen, I've seen, <coughs> I've seen Oakheart a couple of times. Um, so, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, what's your, uh, carrier pigeon's number? Well, uh, I have an owl. Uh, I stay right here oh. in this dorm. If you want to send, uh, any mail, I'll gladly take it. But, of course, I'll see you tomorrow morning in class. We have an exam coming up, actually, that is on... We have an exam on augury tools and interpreting Hell wheels what? and woes. You know what sounds fantastic is that uh, when we're on our date later this week and we're having a beautiful dinner, maybe we could do a little bit of study. Yeah, I would love to study with you. I mean, we've got tonight and tomorrow morning to study, so... Oh, yeah. I, well, I guess it sounds like um, I'll pick you up in the morning for breakfast. Uh, roll me persuasion right. there, Felix. A breakfast date? What are you, a psychopath? Look, man, people like brunch dates. Like, people go out for coffee all the time. 
we go and get some coffee. No, I don't. I don't think so. But um, I'll Give I'll meet you in the study hall, or maybe I will. Well, Doors I'm open. Done, the door. Um, that's a that's a seventeen. Okay. Fine, but I hope you have waffles. Um, you know, I I'm not sure, but I will. I actually, I'll come pick you up. We'll come back to my treehouse in the morning. I'm making waffles. You are. The kitchen's going to be fucking crowded. <laughs> 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 All right. See you then. All right, you have, a, have a lovely night. Yeah. Um, you head back to the dorms as well, Felix, to see Eddie there now. Um, Ronk succeeded on his mission without the assist or the help. Of Professor Buck Woodslobber, he managed to do it by himself. Um, although it took him forever. Actually, you arrive at the dorm, and then Ronk arrives there later with Eddie because it took him so long to figure it out. You get there before. Okay. Him. And Professor E, not pumpkin spice waffles. That sounds gross. We're having blueberry. Okay. All right. Um, and that is where we're going to leave it for tonight. I guess we're going to do a little bit of a breakfast uh, on the start of next episode. Additionally, yeah, next we week, after a test, you guys will be playing Mage Tower. So look forward to that. And I do believe it's going to be you two, Eddie, Rosalie, hopefully if she can be here, and Wadsworth. So Yeah, hopefully Wadsworth can be, be here. excited for that. Yeah, if Wadsworth. Rosalie can't be here, um, Big Kim will take her spot. But it will be oh. Eddie. Wadsworth, Ronk, and Felix. Yes. Can't wait for the Halloween Drunks and Dragons. It's going to be dope, God of War. It's going to be dope. The player's been given a potion. Potion for player. Player's potion. <laughs> hey, kid, good. Don't die. Your bud. W. You can want me to read it for you? Potion of greater healing for Felix. Um, W's. All right. You do not remember? I don't remember? know who W is. Okay. But uh, Felix would be like, I don't remember who W is. But that milk looks really tasty. Oh, and wow. that potion could be useful for later. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Anything you guys want to say or do before we sign off here? Nah. No. No? All right, uh, I do want to say uh, we didn't vote for it yet, but we are, we are going to during our breakdown. I think the only two people who said anything about what they wanted the plus two to go towards was spell attack modifier and spell attacks. Um, so spell attack modifier it is. That's what you guys are going to be getting on your chat character sheet for this week. Fucking congratulations. It was just Odie and whatever. So like whenever you guys make any rolls for spells or cantrips or anything like that, you will be getting a plus two to those things moving forward. And I think Fucking allowing rad. you guys to do the roles for NPCs and things for me in the future, um, especially if you want to, maybe something that we do a little bit more. I think it'd be a lot of fun building a chat character sheet. I'm going to I'm gonna make up a thing. I'm going to try to if I have time. It's going to be fucking fun. But before we go to our final breakdown, we're going to do one last thumbnail. What do you guys think? What are you thinking? Thinking my hat was on wrong. Uh, do you want to give chat the spiel? See if they have any ideas. Hold on, I got you. Well, at least for, for me, week. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? You can't just bust out all the mustaches and then be like, "Good luck, bitch." Yep. <laughs> I can. <laughs> alright y'all make sure to get good screenshots and post them in the discord so we can have some fucking fun with them yeah and we'll be right back uh, in about 5-10 minutes for our breakdown where we're gonna do our show and tell we're gonna look over anything you guys have made um, anything fun that you've done anything like that we're also just gonna be talking about tonight's session and our return it was really excited to be back doing this Nice trash can. Nice. All right, we'll be right back in about 10 minutes, everybody. Hope you got some good screenshots of uh, thumbnails and things.